Welcome to What's My Car Worth? Today, we are checking out some great cars at Gooding & Company's Scottsdale Collector Car Auction. And we've got some of the best touring cars Europe has to offer, ready to get more than a once-over from our boys Keith Martin and Donald Osborne. Speaking of the boys, they're talking with David Gooding of Gooding & Company, checking out a very, very special Gullwing. David, you've got a lot of spectacular cars here, but is there any one in specific that really hits your hot button? Well, uh, definitely one of our favorite cars is this Gullwing right here. Now, obviously, it's beautifully restored. It looks fantastic. But what's really special, you may not be aware of, it's an alloy-bodied Gullwing, one of only 29. The entire bodywork is all aluminum, and it's, of course, lighter weight, and that translates to a higher value. Indeed. What's the difference between the price of a steel Gullwing and this alloy Gullwing? Well, a steel car is probably $750 to $950. This car, we're estimating at two and a half to $3 million. Wow. We wish yeah. you luck. We've got to get back to the cars that we picked out. They are terrific as well. Great. Thank you. Thank you for having us here, and good luck with the sale. Thank you very much. That's quite the Mercedes. Now, let's meet the owner of an iconic British automobile. My name is Michael Shuja, and I'm here to talk about my Aston Martin DB6. This was a one-owner car with a meticulous history. It has only traveled 92,000 miles in 45 years. From day one, the oil was changed every 3,000 miles. Anything that had to be attended to was attended to. The records are unbelievable. I mean, the file on that car is almost eight inches thick. You never see a car with documentation like that. When I first started up and drove it, I couldn't believe it. It rode just like a brand new car. It was perfect. I think this car is worth every bit of $500,000. There's not another one like it in the world. Has there ever been a sexier British car? What will it cost to own this beautiful beast? Find out after the break. Before the break, we evaluated this lovely Aston Martin DB6 Vantage. Gooding says four to 500,000. Keith put it at 425. Let's find out who's right. Put me in at 300,000, 300,000. At 320, 340, 330, I don't mind. 330, 340, at 340, 340, 350, at 350, 350, 360, 370 in the white, 370, 375, 380, 380, 385, 390, I'm bid. 395, yep, 395, 400 now, 400,000, I'm bid. 410, thank you, 410, 420, I'm bid. The bid's at 430, 430, 435 is it now? At 435, 435, 440 I'm bid. At 440, yes, 445, 445, now 450. 450 would you like, sir? No? Then at 445,000 for the first time. 445 the second time. 445,000 for the third and the last time. I sell at 445. Thousand dollars, all that sold your car, sir. Congratulations. Michael Shudroff sells his 1968 Aston Martin, and the market is strong. Gooding estimate 400,000 to 500,000. I think I'm being optimistic at $425,000. Hammer down at $445,000. Michael, were you pleased? Very pleased. The buyer got a great car, and I was really happy with the results. For our next car, we jump across the channel to sunny Italy and this stunning Italian masterpiece. My name is Keith Dooley. I'm here with my Maserati 3500 GT. It's a Speciale prototype, one of two cars built, uh, built in 1961. Uh, this is the Survivor. Unfortunately, the other one has disappeared and we don't know where it is. When I first saw the car, I didn't know what it was. I knew it was a Maserati, but I, I truly did not know it was a through body and I assumed that it was a one-off. I got it in boxes, quite a lot of stuff missing. It took us pretty close to three years of uh, very intensive work to put this car back together. It would be an interesting challenge to try and resurrect this car. My opinion is the car is worth something around $320,000. Now, Keith, we've known each other 25 years. You've always been my alpha guru. I came to visit you one time. You had a Formula One Ferrari in your basement. Yeah. How did you end up with the Maserati? I ended up with this car because a very good friend of mine owned it for a number of years, decided he did not want to restore it himself. He'd restored a lot and he'd had enough. So I had decided to have a go at it. 
There are really two stages to putting a car back together. One is putting the pieces all together. The second one is what we call fettling it to make sure it really runs and drives well. Is this car fettled? Absolutely, it's fettled. All of the bugs have been worked out of it, and that's the hardest part. In, in the, the last 5% or 2% takes the longest period of time, and it takes probably three or four months to get all the little bits and pieces to work correctly the way they should do, the way the manufacturer intended. Donald, would you like to drive the car? You're very welcome to. I certainly would, Keith. Thanks. My pleasure. Like other sports car manufacturers, Maserati, through its history since its founding in the 1920s by the Maserati brothers, built an occasional car for the road just to supply money to build race cars. It all changed in 1957 when Maserati realized that they had to become a real manufacturer in order to save the company. And the result was the Maserati 3500 GT, powered by a terrific twin overhead cam, six-cylinder inline engine. But they hadn't forgotten about that special audience, those well-heeled factory owners and movie stars that looked to have a little bit something special. And so, coach builders like Karatsuriya Frua still did designs on the Maserati 3500 GT, and this is an example of one. It is a wonderful looking car. You just feel extraordinary driving a car like this. It's got such unbelievable and unmistakable Italian presence. Nothing like the sound of that Maserati engine. It just gives me goosebumps every time I hear it. It never gets old. <laughs> Donald, Maserati has kind of been the forgotten stepchild of Italian exotics. You've got Ferrari at the top of the heap. Then you have Alfa Romeo with much less expensive cars and kind of being the everyman zippy runaround. But here you have these six cylinder cars cruisers, but they've just never excited the public the way the other two marks do. But the technology and the heritage of Maserati is something which cannot be ignored. You mentioned the six-cylinder engine. This magnificent twin-cam six-cylinder engine with the twin spark plugs. That is from racing practice to make sure that you didn't foul plugs. This car also has the wonderful uh, triple Webers. Later cars in this series had fuel injection by Lucas. This car's got the Webers, which is really quite wonderful. And this car also has a very special body. And the details on this are absolutely amazing. The little fins in between the headlights and the little jewel-like emblems on the roof. It's just amazing the number of little details you find in this car. OK, but that's the outside of the car. You got a chance to drive this car. Does it work as a car? It absolutely does. The car is a pleasure to drive. Fun to drive? No. This is a boulevard cruiser, a car designed to cross continents. How do you rate this car? Is it a one? Is it a five? The car has been very well restored. The paint is absolutely beautiful. The details are done very well. The chrome and the polished alloy trim is beautiful. The panel fit is really excellent on the hood and the doors. The trunk is slightly off in the back on one corner. And there's a little problem inside the car with a little piece of headliner that's loose. These are things that can be fixed probably in an afternoon. On our scale of one to six, I would still rate this car as a one. When it comes to collectability, this is a rare car, Donald. They only built two, and this is the only one to survive. If it were a 3500 GT with the stock body, I'd give it a C. But with this custom through a body, it gets a B. Values. $65,000 to $145,000, average price $110,000. Auction company estimate, $300 to $375,000. I think they're just slightly ahead of the market. The car is going to sell. It's going to sell at $275,000. Coming up, this marvelous Maserati finds a new home, and there's a fabulous Ferrari right on its tail. Stick with us. Back in Scottsdale, Arizona at the Gooding & Company auction, where some lucky bidder is about to take home this unique Maserati 3500 GT Speciale. Chance to buy a Maserati 3500 with no reserve, so you can start me where you like. 100,000 bid me. 
100,000 on my left here. 110, 120, 130, 130, 140, 140 on the left here. 150 in the second row, 150, 160. 160 now, 170 sitting on my right here. On the telephone, 185. 180, 190 on the left, 190. 200,000 dollars I'm bid. 210, 215. It is about 215. 2, 2, 230, another bidder altogether. 240, 240, 245, 250, 250, 250, 255, 260, 260. Oh, just say 300 and be done with it. 265, 265, 270, uh, 270, 275 now. At 200, and 75, 275, 275, 275, 280 now. At 275. <laughs> thousand dollars for the first time 275,000 for the second time 275,000 for the third and the last time I honestly sell this car sold 275 now 1961 Maserati brought here by Keith Dooley exquisitely restored one of one but it didn't do what he hoped it would Gooding said 300 to 375. Mr. Dooley said 320. I was a little cautious. I said 275. Hammer down. $275,000. Were you disappointed? Oh, slightly, but I'm more than happy that uh, it got to that number. I'm so glad you brought it to the show. I'm happy too. Sounds like he's ready to move on to his next project. Now, let's dig into the mailbag for a look at what you're driving. Jim from Woodstock, Vermont, has sent us pictures of his 1967 Mini Cooper S. It's the real deal. A certified S, 1275cc engine, and completely restored, winner of many awards. These are the original Minis, not the big ones built now by BMW. They're really fun to drive. They're not particularly rare. They built almost 45,000 of them. Collectability is a B, but people love these cars. This car is worth $25,000. To have your car evaluated, send photos and a description to my car at whatsmycarworth.tv. Keep those cars coming. Next up, a fabulous Ferrari. I'm Brooke Betts, and I'm here today with a 1955 Ferrari Europa GT. That's a piece of artwork, a piece of one of a kind artwork, and that's what draws me to these types of cars and this car in particular. First time I saw the car, I was uh, three, four years old. My dad had it as his first Ferrari, and he drove me around as a young kid. It had a big impression on me to see something like that, because at the time, no, no cars looked like that on the road. They're very unique cars, very few of them made. They only made 36 Europa GTs. I think this car will sell for 800,000. Brooke Betts from Orange County, California, has brought us his 1955 Ferrari 250 Europa GT. Brooke, they didn't build many of these cars, but I understand that this car has a difference between some of the others. Yeah, this has a coil spring front suspension rather than a transverse leaf with only the last 14 or so were made that way. Much better car. Do you like driving these older Ferraris? Yeah, I enjoy this style with the coil spring, yes. It's very nice. Do you think I would enjoy driving it? You would enjoy driving this car very much. Do you think I would enjoy driving driving it right now? Yes, you would enjoy driving it. Does that mean I can drive it right now? You can drive it right now. You are my new best friend, thank you. Thank you. First, on with the key. Ferrari, is there any other name in the car world that evokes such passion and such excitement? And over 50 years ago, this very car was the Paris show car, a 1955 Europa 250 GT. And I get to drive it. This is a thrill. This car has a three liter V12. I like all the gauges. Fuel, water, oil pressure, very ornate tachometer, speedometer. This car drives very well. Pulls strongly from low RPM. The steering wheel is a little funny. It's got bumps on the back, which I'm sure are correct. Uh, I've just never driven anything like that. This car demonstrates that throughout time, it's been good to be rich. Oh, Donald. 
I just drove this 250 Europa. It's an awesome car. I'll bet. And, and I need one. I need one. And I figured out how to get one. How? Lottery. <laughs> well, for Enzo Ferrari, the 250 Ferrari was also like winning the lottery because this was the car that really put his company on the map as a serious car company. Before this, they just built a few cars for the road just to help pay for the race cars. But with the 250 series, they began to actually build cars for customers. Oh, and they were real cars. They had wipers that worked. They had heaters, defrosters. Let's take a look under the hood. The nice. heart of any Ferrari, that wonderful V12 engine. And if you want instant cred in the Ferrari world, you can say, well, of course, this is the Lampredi long block, not the Colombo short block. Echo. How about beautiful paint and fantastic interior. This is one of the most beautiful cars that ever came out of the Pininfarina Carrozzeria. It is just absolutely gorgeous. It's smooth, it's sleek. The panel fit is excellent. The shut lines are superb. The chrome is beautiful. There's a few scratches on the left rear bumper. Oh my God. And inside there's some scuffs on the side of the driver's seat. But the level of detail in this restoration is amazing. First of all, the car still has most, if not all, of its original glass. It's even got the little markings from Securit, from the glass manufacturer. The level of detail here is stunning. On our scale of one to six, this car is a one. I can't disagree with you at all. When it comes to collectability, this car is extraordinary. It's rare, they only built 36. I'm going to give it an A. Now, values. I am going to need to buy a lot of lottery tickets to put this car in my garage. These are not cheap cars. Over the past five years, the prices have been pretty consistent. They've sold for between $715,000 and $790,000. Average price, $750,000. Auction company, they believe the car will bring between $750,000 and $900,000. I think they're right. I think the car will sell at the low estimate, $750,000, and there will be one happy new owner. Did Keith nail this one on the head? Either way, it's going to take a lot of euros to park this beauty in your driveway. Back with the action after this short break. Welcome back. Here's a rare opportunity to own a Ferrari 250 Europa GT. Keith thinks it'll hit $750,000. Let's see if he's right. The Paris Motor Show Ferrari 250. 500,000 at 500,000. 550 sitting down. 550, 600,000, 625, 650, 700,000 dollars. I am bid. 725, 725. I've got you for the first time at 725,000 dollars. For the second time at 725,000 dollars. For the third and the last time at 725. Thousand dollars, all done. So, congratulations, sir. Brooks, 1955 Ferrari has gone to a new home. Brooke Gooding thought 750 to nine. You said 800. I said 750. Hammer down seven and a quarter. What do you think? I think that was a good price for the car. I'm glad that someone got the car and it's going to a new home. What are you going to do with the money? Oh, I'll probably buy some other cars. Congratulations. Thank you. It's been a great time here at Gooding & Company, and we've seen some very exciting sales. We looked at the alloy body Gullwing earlier tonight, and it just crossed the block, setting a world record at $4.2 million. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to come back next time for another episode of What's My Car Worth? Good morning, sir. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you again. Every collection needs something with horns on it. Would you like to bid for this car, sir? No, <laughs> I just thought I'd check. My, oh my, you do surprise me. Are you saying yes, sir? She's saying no. You don't know what's going on. 140, I bet if I go going for the first time, second time, third time, you'll bid. Don't you look at him and wave at him. You look at me. It's me that wants your bid.